What is going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Loading Podcast. My name is Arthur. And my name is AJ. It is the last day of January, people. January 31st, 2020. It is a cloudy day here in NYC, but my boy, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. You know, it's cloudy, but it's not that cold outside. I'm chilling. No, compared to last night, holy shit. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Doing all right, doing all right. Uh, I recently came back from class, which is... Not bad, I'm back in school, Mm -hmm. just taking up some uh, American history classes, and so far I'm enjoying them. Yeah. Yeah, I've been enjoying them a lot recently. Um, I will say, I've had a very long week. I can tell, I know, it started a new semester and you're Mm -hmm. still doing all your other things that you're... I have had an incredibly long week, just me going to a lot of places, me being outside most of the time, so now that the weekend's here and... I've gotten most of this stuff out of the way. I am just really looking forward to some relaxation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, That's what's up. And also, I just got to point it out to the episode that we're on, 24. You know what I'm saying? R.I.P. Kobe. Yeah, R.I.P. Kobe. Uh, and all the people that all the people that down there playing. It's, 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 it's sad, you know, but hey. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly sad. He was taken away from us way too soon. Uh, for the legend that he is, mm-hmm. I just I just had to bring it up because you know what I'm saying it is a fair episode 24. Mm-hmm. Come on, like yeah. you know, say it's only right, but yeah, yeah. it's also ironic, not ironic, the, the the timing, right? The fact that we're on episode 24 and then this tragedy happens, like it, yeah. we're just it's due for like mentioning. So mm-hmm. may he rest in peace. I hope that he's in a better place right now, alongside his daughter and all the people that were inside the crash, because we can't forget that there were other people in there. Yep. Yes. So yep. yes, yep. like I said. Rest in peace. But we have to move on and move forward. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? We actually have a stocked episode today. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Yes. Things and that I'm excited for, honestly. Yeah, things that uh, are exciting. Mm-hmm. So. Things that are exciting, but also things that are questionable. Mm-hmm. Like, as we know, uh, so basically, if you can, if you can, anybody who plays Smash knows mm-hmm. that Byleth is now out. Yes, he is. Along with Cuphead. Yes. And all this other stuff. But yeah, uh... You've gotten your chance to, to try Byleth out. What do you think? Um, Byleth, well, for one, he's incredibly fun with the amount of range that he has and also power. This man is a fucking powerhouse when it comes to attacks and range. But he is incredibly slow. I'm talking like you play Robin, right, in Smash? Yeah. He is slightly faster than him. Okay. He's Not slightly bad. faster. But um, he still feels incredibly sluggish because he doesn't jump very high. Um, he doesn't run very fast, and a lot of his moves have like quite a bit of startup to it. Mm-hmm. But he still doesn't feel too clunky in the fact that you know he's so low that he's like a Ganondorf. Type right. I, I know Robin's supposed to be a slow character, but from my experience playing Robin, I never really felt like she was uh slow, like or like too slow, because I felt like. Uh, the range that she had with her attacks was like just right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it was, she didn't like they didn't overdo it by making her like too fast. Yeah. Because then that would have been a problem. Yeah, that would have been a problem for the character that could just spam a lot of spells at you for God knows how long at that point. Mm-hmm. But so, yeah. So we talked prior about how this character was gonna be before release, mm-hmm. but now that you got in your time with it, do you do you think that this is a good last character to the DLC pack that we're getting for Ultimate? In terms of, I guess, gameplay, because um, the DLC characters that we've had, like, they've introduced some new stuff, like, you know, Joker with Arsene, the randomness that is Hero, um, Banjo's incredibly powerful side B, and then Terry um, with his um, multiple... Uh, like, it, it, he, he plays a lot like Ryu and um, Ken from Street Fighter, where you play, like, the fighting game. Having a more traditional character back in Smash feels nice, I will say. Although the choice still um, stings a little bit. If by traditional, do you mean sword fighter? Yeah, yeah, very traditional in that. Uh, I don't know. Is anything traditional about that reach though? Mm-hmm. That reach, reach is, is very insane. not untraditional. Reach. No, yeah, yeah. Like when, you, when your side B covers um, half the map. Yeah, <laughs> basically it covers half the stage if you aim it right. But um, yeah, like the choice still stings a little bit because. I know that other people were expecting something else aside from Fire Emblem again. Um, Coming from a person that has, once again, enjoyed the Fire Emblem series and also Three Houses especially, this doesn't really hurt too much. In fact, I actually like it. Um, Only because now, for the next season pass, we won't have to worry about Three Houses anymore. At least I'm hoping. 
Who knows? It might even add fucking Dimitri or one of the lords from the game into the into the past. Mm-hmm. I said this. I said this before, mm-hmm. but I'll, I'll say it again. Like these characters have been picked. You know, what I'm saying a long, long time ago. So mm-hmm. we knew. I mean, they, I mean, they knew that Biolift was coming. They just didn't know how long it was gonna take for her to be put out. So I yeah. guess she ended up being last in this situation, and it basically just kind of for, for for the for the like fans, for like the hardcore fans. I guess I kind of just. In their opinion, it kind of just switched the momentum of the, the releases that have been coming out. Because you got third party, third party, third party, third party. And then here comes, bam, another Fire Emblem character. Yeah. At a time uh, where a lot of people are already, like, oversaturated with the amount of Fire char- fire Emblem characters that are in the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have four versions of the same character. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. This is going to sound... This is being fan, you Fire Emblem fan, you, you can get mad if you want. Mm-hmm. Fire Emblem's not that big of a game. <laughs> like this, like don't get me wrong, it's, it sells millions of copies. Mm-hmm. But like in terms of like uh, when I when I when I think about what Nintendo franchise, Reach. No, no. When I think about Reach, oh, Reach. In terms of different layers of the gaming community, in terms of applying like a game that can reach multiple generations of like anyone from like Nintendo says they can they, the game is anyone from nine to ninety nine. I don't see any any nine year old picking this game up. <laughs> And enjoying it now when they got Fortnite, and I don't really see mm-hmm. any. I could see, I could, I really feel like this game is more directed to like adults because I, I, I like the whole, uh, like it's similar to chess and aspects. You have a lot of moving pieces going on at the same time. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's it's not like a crazy crazy big game. So for it to have so much representation when you're going up against uh other games with the likes of Mario, Legend of Zelda, mm-hmm. you know, games that have sold hundreds of million copies, Pokemon, like I can mm-hmm. keep going. But, you know what I'm saying? It kind of seems like a lot <laughs> to, yeah. to be having all these characters in a game where it's like, it's not even, most people that pick up Smash, I mean, I'm not I mean, I'm not going to speak for everyone, but I, I would say a lot of people I know that have played Fire Emblem have been introduced to Fire Emblem because of Smash. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I definitely agree. I mean, um, me, myself, I was introduced uh, only because, well, my story was like, um, a, Miguel played Awakening. Uh-huh. And I saw that it looked cool. I decided to give it a shot. And I just liked the series afterwards. And I know a lot of people. Look, if you, you've gotten into Fire Emblem, one of two ways: either you've played Smash and you've seen the characters and you're like, "All right, they look cool," or you had a 3DS and you played Awakening. Is what I find because that's where the series really started to get popular with a lot of fans. So it's one of those two. And then with how much it exploded afterwards, at least compared to um. It's original sales, right? Mm-hmm. Nintendo saw like you know, oh, people actually like Fire Emblem now. Yeah, let's it, capitalize on yeah. this. Yeah, it's it's a very it's a very high selling game. Mm-hmm. I, it has its fan base, but like I just don't really see it having the type of impact that a Mario or a Zelda yeah. has, or even a Pokemon. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Or even a Metroid. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, Metroid's I I'd say Metroid is arguable because only because the series has been very dormant. The series has been has while. been very dormant, but I mean, just like when I when I can think about uh, when Melee came out mm-hmm. and the hype for Metroid was still very much there, yeah, and Samus was there and everything. I I get I get where it was then at that time at the time of release. The only thing, the only time, the only reason I'm really saying Samus now is because all the characters from Smash Bros is in this game now. So it's yeah. like you know what I mean. It's like yeah, it's cool. Yeah, you can you can bring 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 back you know what I'm saying all these people, but like. You know what I'm saying? At least at that time, they had like that sort of representation. I just don't feel like Fireman has that same type of representation in the gaming industry. Mm-hmm. That, but that's that's just my point of view, though. Yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. can you can feel free to you know say disagree with me if you feel that way. No, because I'm thinking about it, right? And I'm, on one hand, I'm like Fire Emblem now in 2020 is very popular because well, I I like to chalk it up to the fact that Fire Emblem likes to take what modern uh i guess young adults like those who are like really like anime you know like uh uh i guess mature storylines especially coming from a nintendo uh from from company from a company like nintendo and i don't know there's like uh, the fan base is there because of the fact like you know fire emblem is very anime-esque um the gameplay whether you like it or not, it can't. It's it's very fun if you're into that type of genre. Yeah, and you can get a lot of, um, you know, fan fiction and all that shit. And no, I get that. I'm not even calling mm-hmm. it a bad game. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I, I was just saying, like, f- for in terms of popularity, for the amount of representation that we're seeing, it just doesn't 
it just doesn't match. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how many characters? Eight characters? Nine characters? No, yeah, that makes eight. That makes eight. It makes eight characters? Eight Fire Emblem characters in Smash. You know what I mean? It's like, that's, four of them that's, are the same Isn't that more too. than, like, Pokemon? No? No. Or just, uh, Pokemon has maybe one more? No, I think they're the same amount. Same amount? Same, same amount. amount as Pokemon? Yeah. See, you, see Pokemon has sold five times more than Fire Emblem. Yeah. But they have the same amount of characters. It just doesn't... Mm-hmm. I don't see the correlation. I mean, I know I'm not counting Pokemon Trainers three mm-hmm. characters, by the mm-hmm. way. No. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Like, do you count Pokemon no. Trainer? Because that's three different no, characters, don't. technically I, speaking. I don't. <laughs> well, I don't know if it, it's probably just because, like, you haven't interacted with the, the community that much. But I... Since I play Fire Emblem frequently, I can see, like... Whenever I approach like gamers or if I talk to them and I talk about they talk about Fire Emblem, they know and they've played at least like one of the games, if not three houses at this point. Yeah, I, three I, I understand that, but like I feel like that's more like a popular. Nintendo thing. So I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh no, no, no it's, fine, it's fine. But like what I, what I what I meant by saying that is like I meant I, I led by stating by saying that uh, games that can reach... last multiple like generations, like you were talking about, like but how you know you're not not just generations, but just uh, different areas in the gaming community. Like I like I said, like we talked like about a Mario, then we talked Zelda. about a Mario, we talked about a Pokemon. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't, I don't see Fire Emblem having that that same kind of reach. Is what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying it's not a you know what I'm saying good game or game mm-hmm. that doesn't sell millions and millions of copies. So like I'm, I'm just not seeing the I'm not seeing the correlation in terms of impact. In mm-hmm. terms of uh, representation in the, in this fighting game, like say for like you know how Mar- your Mario's, your Zelda's, and your Pokemon can reach to a wide variety of people based off yeah. the type of game that they are, right? Yeah, yeah. Like you yeah. know, a, 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 a five year old can pick up Pokemon and enjoy it much as much. Uh, they can enjoy as much as a twenty five year old or a thirty five year old, or like mm-hmm. a different demographics is what. what yeah, I'm trying n- to not say. to even say that I dislike this character in Smash or the mm-hmm. inclusion of having another sword fighter. It, it's just more like. I feel like that spot could have gone to a franchise more deserving and a franchise that could deserve the representation in a fighting game that doesn't already have eight other, I mean, seven other representatives. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That have been in the game for a decade. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, that that's just how I feel. I just don't really yeah. see the correlation. No, I I, do, I understand that. Yeah, Sakurai likes Fire Emblem. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, didn't they say something how um, Nintendo was the one that chose the characters, not Sakurai? Well, Nintendo likes Fire Emblem. Go fucking figure. Oh, damn, go yeah, figure. Yeah. They got they're bringing, copies. They Fire Emblem. Bring, uh, Fire Emblem brings them that moolah, my guy. Yep. So the weebs draw into it like it's nothing. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can say for it myself. Exactly. <laughs> No, but just to just to close it off real quick, um, yeah, um, I mean, just think about it like this: Smash already has so many different franchises in it right now, that is incredible. I mean, we have Final Fantasy, just to name a few, um, Street Fighter, um, freaking uh, Splatoon, Mario, uh, Bayonetta, Animal Crossing, Zelda, Pokemon, Fire Emblem. <laughs> all, right, all right, yeah, we, we, we well, you get the idea. We, yeah, we get the idea. Like. It's still, like, we're going to still get six more characters. So, um, you know, this is already the biggest crossover game, I think, that is currently on the market right now. Mm-hmm. So My question is, how much is too much, though? Yeah. <laughs> how much is too much? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I'm starting to think. How much is honesty. too much, Nintendo? I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, hey, I feel like that's a good place to leave it yeah. off. Yeah, hey, we get six more characters, so fuck it. Hey, man. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, Let's I'm hope they're all third party. If it's gonna be first party, it better be from a different franchise at least. No more Fire Emblem at this point. Honestly, no I, I think I'm good off first party DLC. You know, <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> well, you want, yeah, you you, you want to see some Devil May Cry? No, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I just, still want to see Resident just, Evil. Just give us some more third party. That's yeah, I, I want to see I, some more Resident Evil. God damn it! Where's want, my Leon Kennedy? I want to see more hype. I want to see. I wanted to see Tifa for Final Fantasy VII, or even like fuck, fuck it, bro. Not this. I'll, I'll take Noctis. You know I've been wanting Noctis in Smash. Noctis, since... would, Noctis would actually work really well in, front, in, in Smash Bros. See, actually. now that you've played the game. You can... I have. Speaking of which, I think yeah. we haven't even talked about We haven't even talked about games we've been playing. Bro, I, I, picked up, I, I picked up Final Fantasy XV. I beat that game within like within like a few days. It How was did great. you enjoy it? It was good. It was good? It was, it was actually... Uh, there was there was a few things I had complaints about in terms of the way that the world innately restricts your your the way you can play the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but besides that, uh, in in the way that the the map is structured and the way how like say like you can certain areas are kind of restricted to you in certain modes that I don't want to really spoil. Yes, but 
in terms of story and gameplay and the actual combat, I had no problems with the game at all. Okay. Except good. except for the ending, but hey, I'm not gonna talk about it. <laughs> I mean, um, I I think I told you this in the guys before. I was always a big um supporter for Noctis being in Smash. First Final Fantasy game I beat, by the way. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. You never beat a Final Fantasy game. Well, I played thirteen, and I played uh, an old one on like PlayStation Two. I don't remember which one. It might have been. There was probably ten. Is if it's a kid with like blondish hair and like it a, was overalls. in like a mall or something or not a mall but like a like a urb, some like an urban area. An urban area. And then you kind of go into like a forest and shit. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, I think it could still be. 10 I don't remember 12. which one I played, but I know it was a Final Fantasy game. Yes. Um, you might like the other game. Well. You might like the other games in the series because they are not as um, what you liked in fifteen. I'm, I'm looking at seven based. remake. Yeah, I'm, I'm still waiting for seven remake, mind you. Mm-hmm. But hey, anyways, I feel yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we gotta go. This is a stacked episode. Exactly, we're already six. We got we're sixteen minutes in, and we're already just getting to our first topic. Yep, yep. All right. So, first thing on the list is, uh, you know, what I'm saying tomorrow when when this episode comes out, or today for you when you're listening, February first. Mm-hmm. New month. So you know New what that means already. For PlayStation and Xbox. Now, do you want to take? Uh, you want to take PlayStation? And I take Xbox. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. So for PlayStation Plus in the month of February, you will be getting the Sims Four. You will be getting the Bioshock Collection, which comes with Bioshock One, Two, and Infinite. Mm-hmm. And what's the other game? It's like a VR game. It is Firewall Fire. Zero Hour. From what we saw, it is a Virtual reality um, militaristic shooter. Now, I was asking you if this had multiplayer, but I'm assuming... Now, no, the more I think about it, the more I think, yeah, multiplayer would not be an option. Because yeah, imagine having multiplayer know. in uh, a VR game like this, where you have to manually aim everywhere. My, my main thing me. was if you can, it could be played without the VR. If not, then eh, it's a little disappointing. But hey, I mean, they're giving one more game than extra, so it's yeah. whatever. For all for all the uh, all the uh, ten people that want to PlayStation VR, fucking crazy. <laughs> I guess. Now, quick question: Have you ever played um, any of the Bioshock games before this? No, no, not really. I think you might like it. Um, I've only ever played the first one on Xbox, and from what I played, it was very enjoyable. But um, uh, I played I played uh, one at like a friend's house before. Mm-hmm. But in terms of like playing them to, to completion, I've never played a Bioshock game. Well, then I think you should definitely try them when it comes out. And to all of you that are listening to this, I highly recommend that if you have PlayStation and PlayStation Plus alongside it, that you should try the Bioshock Collection. It is a very good um, set of um, what would you call them? Like uh, not dystopian first person shooters, but it's just a good first person shooter in general. It's very good, very well done, especially Infinite, from what I've heard. I've only ever played one, so don't take me on that. You want to take Xbox? Yes. Now, for you Xbox owners, you're still in love. You still got some good games coming out uh, this month. So, for Xbox One, uh, between February 1st and the 29th, you'll get, what is that? TT Isle of Man and... A racing game? That's a racing game? Yeah, it's a motorcycle racing game. All right, right, next. (laughs) And then, uh, between February 16th and March 15th, also on Xbox One, is Call of Cthulhu. Uh, have you ever heard of that? I might have seen it in in, in the GameStop uh, pre-owned Moving games on. under $10. Moving on! And... <laughs> um, Listen, we're good. Call of Cthulhu, like the, the, the monster Cthulhu? Yo, my guy, yo, we're good. Alright, what's next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, what's next? What's Xbox next? Xbox 360. One, my guy. For those of you that still um, play on it, or oh, you can still play it. I think uh, this back was compatible, though. Yes, right? I believe so. You get Fable Heroes starting between February 1st and February 15th. And on the original Xbox, between February 16th and the 29th, you have access to the original Star Wars Battlefront. I hear you snoring over <laughs> there, sorry, my whoa, guy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I hear you snoring. All right, if I got to keep it a buck, the only good game on here is uh, Battlefront. I know, I know. Moving on. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid bias. Even though Microsoft drives them into this, to themselves. You know what I mean? But yeah, out of all these, Battlefront is probably the best one. I'm disappointed that it's not Battlefront 2. Uh, but Battlefront is still a good game regardless. You're disappointed because you're not going to be playing it anywhere next time. Yeah, I'm not even going to be able to play it. I mean, it would be nice for them to have it so that okay. new people can get introduced. But yeah, anyway, 
that's Xbox Gold Games. Um, me personally, um, I think PlayStation wins this. If we're gonna do like a PlayStation, usually tends to have the better. Yeah, games. PlayStation tends to win because all right, the well, quality. all right, well, well said, well said. <laughs> All right. Moving on to Moving other on. news, to right. other games. All right, all right. We're going to be talking about a, a game whose community is, is, is um, more dead <laughs> than the... Uh, <laughs> no, God, I'm not Don't you it. even make that joke, it, my guy. The community is not dead. It's very... It's, um, just, it's just... It's a former uh, shell of what it once was. How about that? It's turning into Warcraft and shit. <laughs> God <laughs> damn, all right. Yo, fuck, that's fucked up, bro. I mean, is it wrong? Yo, little Timmy that's playing Overwatch right now, who's in bronze right now, probably is, like, uh, offended. Yo. Good. <laughs> Be offended. <laughs> Be offended. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, a recent developer update from Blizzard, or the Overwatch team, revealed a Quite a bit of stuff that's going to be ha- coming to the game. Uh-huh. You actually told me about this off-camera, but I'm, I'm actually just... Uh, I'm still I'm still sort of shy. All right, just explain yes. to them what's going on. All right. So, well, the first thing that is a welcome change is that they're going to make uh, an effort and an improvement to um, the frequency of the amount of uh, content that we get, um, balance updates, changes to heroes, all that type of stuff. All right. Can we get a round of applause for Blizzard real quick? Just, mm-hmm. just round of applause. I'll put it in post. Don't yeah, worry yeah, about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Why did it take three years? Four years. Let me coming ask. up on four years. Coming up on four years. Can I just say that, right? And the announcement of a sequel. And the announcement of a sequel for this to happen. Like, I, I was telling you this. And, and a bunch of backlash from the community because the game is getting drier than a fucking mm-hmm. piece of bread that's been in the microwave for a month. God damn, you spent way too much time on that analogy. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I was telling you this off dry, camera. my guy. What the fuck are you going to say? <laughs> Yo, listen. I was explaining this to you when we were talking about this off camera, right? Overwatch, one of the biggest things that really held it back, in my opinion, was the frequency at which they would release updates and patches to the game, right? Yeah. Because you have your League of Legends, your Fortnite, your Counter-Strikes, um, you have your uh, Rainbow Six Sieges, where they get very frequent updates mm-hmm. that change the game just enough that it makes you want to keep playing to see what's different. Yeah, but even speaking of updates, the thing about this game specifically is a lot of people don't remember when this game first came out, this game was as bare bones as bare bones could get this yes. game was as bare bones dude, as titanfall one dude we play yeah we right? played it would you would you agree with me on that statement yes this I'd game agree. was as bare bones as titanfall one and if, and it had a lot of community engagement at first but as the months went by uh, it would take months like a few like a few months maybe like once or twice a year or maybe mm-hmm. three times a year they would come up with like a new character or something what was it twice i think it was um two or, twi- two or three, two or three times a year. a year and that's not a bad output it's more mm-hmm. so that the things that they were offering just weren't enough to keep community interest for too long. Yeah, because I remember, um, I think because we me- we we played this um around the time when it first came out. Yep. I participated in the beta, and you got the game. I think like a week after it came out. Yeah, like not too long ago. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- 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 okay, uh, let's let's cut to the chase. We we got we got to get to the point. Okay? Yes, we got to get to the point. The events, the the community events for Overwatch are now boring. Yes, they've been boring for. Go, a year, it, a been year for a year. It's been boring. They, they're 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 boring. Like either switch it up or just don't bring them back. Yeah, we need new stuff. We yeah. are. I I already explained. On I'm podcast. tired of playing fucking May four v four Christmas. I'm tired of playing Junkenstein's Revenge. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of playing an anniversary event. When you can predict what's gonna be happening, I think that's a sign that you need to change things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But anyway, at least it's happening now. But explain to them what they're adding. Yes. All right. So, they're going to be adding two things. The first one I'll explain because I have it up right now. So, what's going to happen is that they're thinking of implementing a hero pool system. Now, um, if you've ever played any, like, competitive game mode in, like, your Call of Duty, your League of Legends, you where you get to, like, ban and choose certain characters so that the other per- people can't pick them, right? Mm-hmm. So... Instead of um, banning characters, like you ban certain characters, Blizzard themselves will select characters to be banned from that week in competitive play. All right, now stop right there. What, what's your opinion on that? I don't think this is a good way to limit... You're essentially limiting the players on what characters they can choose. And, and I think... Uh-huh. I think... In all honesty, it is 
a bad excuse for them not balancing the game more often or changing is this is this a rank often. thing sorry, sorry to cut you it off. is a competitive thing yes okay i don't think this will affect quick play or your regular casual modes uh-huh so you don't have to worry about that but for people that like to play competitive a lot and ranked this will affect you all right if this goes through now, now let me tell you what i think i think this is a dumbass decision mm-hmm. i think this is an awful play mm-hmm. now explain why because you wanted in, to save this instead part. Instead of just um, having Blizzard pick the bands, I feel like they should just implement hero bands in the in the ranked mode. Mm-hmm. I agree. You know completely. what I'm saying? Like I don't I don't understand the point of of doing that. You know what I mean? Especially because the way I look at it is like this, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Overwatch meta favors certain characters. Always. That's what every meta um, in an in a game always tends to do. The Overwatch meta just favors certain characters. So from that, I can probably guess. That the characters that are going to be in rotation are characters that are uh, basically fit the meta. Mm-hmm. And what if I want to play ranked, but I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to fit into the meta. What if I, what if I don't really like Reinhardt? What if I like Arisa better or, or Roadhog better? Or mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Well, for that week, you're basically out of luck if they're not in rotation. Yeah, pretty much. I want to be able to play whatever character I want. I'm, I'm not saying that you know what I'm saying like p- players shouldn't try to fit the role that the team needs. If the team needs a tank, you should be a tank, but you should have the option of picking these these tanks. I feel like if they were going to go down this route, they should limit the the roles in half. Mm-hmm. For instance, like how they're like six uh six attacks mm-hmm. and six tanks or whatever, there could be three tanks, three three tanks and three attacks or three defense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or yeah. or just implement a hero band system. That's the easiest thing mm-hmm. in the world to do. Cuz you see the um, Overwatch already has a role queue, right? Uh-huh. Where um in competitive and now in quick play too, you have to choose what role uh you want to take. Like for example, do you want to be a healer? Do you want to be a damage dealer or do you want to be a, t- a tank? And when you pick that, when you go in game, you are limited to those heroes in that category. Blizzard is essentially doubling down on that and saying, all right, so instead of role queue or instead of a hero band system um, like you're proposing, we're essentially going to choose the characters you play for that week. Uh huh. Yeah, that now, doesn't make any sense. Now, keep in mind, I don't know how many they're going to be taking away. For all we know, they probably could take out three heroes or they'll probably limit it to just eight heroes that you can play hell why not a randomizer where they can have uh you could pick a role and they randomize uh between two or three characters but we added like the five or six they can randomize between two and three and the other ones are unavailable that would be well, i mean that isn't, isn't, that kind of, isn't that kind of well it, it, it sounds if like they're what choosing, they're doing it's not a randomizer yeah, yeah, yeah. but i mean like I a randomizer say. for each match oh for each match yes yes so like say for example one match you get mm-hmm. um dps and the the game recommends you genji um soldier and widowmaker and you have to choose between your options yes yes or even say like uh if the team is in depending on if you're playing attack or defense the the, the characters that they recommend to you are based off the other players counter picks mm-hmm you know what I mean? Yeah. Just something to add it to 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 flesh it out a little more. This this the way that you're I'm I'm reading it off of this article. It does not sound flushed out to me. This sounds like a poor excuse for another game mode that they can say that they have. It, yes. It's not really interesting. Where the fuck is no limits? <laughs> <laughs> this man has been wanting no limits back for almost two years there, now. It's like it's like they're it's like they're kind of moving in reverse from where I, from what I want Overwatch to be, mm-hmm. but at the same time they're also kind of moving towards what I want Overwatch to be. It's like sense. for every good thing that you see, there's always a pushback. Like, yeah, let me explain it because it's like it's like it's like for instance, right? I would I would want Overwatch to be that fun like awesome party game where I can just like gang up on like people with like you know what I'm saying a certain a certain uh, meta mm-hmm. that may not be the meta competitive meta but it could be a meta where it, it, the formula leads to a lot of fun mm-hmm. it, whether that could be uh, three uh, Reinhardts and you know what I'm saying like or uh, three Tracers or something mm-hmm. to annoy the hell of the enemy team or whether that could be anything else you know what I mean but uh, the thing is instead of that they're kind of retracting away from the freedom of that the player has to pick and instead of Instead of giving them the freedom and having options to to play whatever they want to play or play however they want to play, mm-hmm. they're actually doing the opposite. They're restricting ways that you can play this game and in mm-hmm. in this game mode. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't really like that because it not only does it take away uh, the the freedom of choice, mm-hmm. like choosing which character you play. Like like what if you what if you only have what if you play tank but you only play one tank. 
or two tanks. And that's not the tank that they have. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's like... And keep in mind that this is going to be in competitive playlists. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever you play a competitive playlist in a game like this, you're always going to be paired with teammates that expect that you know um, how to play. Yeah. Like, you go in there and say, for example, you are a Roadhog one trick. People expect exactly. that. Like, all right, you play Roadhog. All right, I expect a very good Roadhog. When you're taking away that choice of the person um, not being able to play Roadhog, you're going to eventually lead into scenarios where people just aren't going to know how to play the other heroes as well as they normally would. They can't operate at 100% performance yes. if they don't have as much experience with a character. And in a it, ranked setting Imagine like if that, League did that shit. <laughs> yo, if League did that, holy Yo, 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 100 crap. characters, yo, here, here's his 20. <laughs> Yeah, he's twenty. <laughs> he's thirty or something. You know what I'm saying? And you but, know, you know what's funny? League has a rotational. system. I couldn't system. imagine the rotational system is fine, and it works in League, but, and but it yeah. works in Paladins too. Yeah, but keep in yeah. Here's the difference: those are characters that you get to try for free because the game exactly le- wants you to experiment. They're not characters that you have from the jump. You yeah, know what I mean? unlike Overwatch, this is literally the opposite of what those games try to do. The games want you to try new heroes. This game is trying to limit your heroes. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I hope Overwatch 2 is going to be headed in a good place. Because from what I'm looking at from all these signs, it does not look uh, very good. We even said this on the podcast when they announced Overwatch 2. We shared our thoughts. Feel free to go back and listen to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, just search for it. You know what I'm saying? The loading podcast everywhere. But hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, basically, basically, my point is uh, where I really want Blizzard to go is towards more of that steam route where they went with like the team fortress too when you, when you give players the ultimate freedom mm-hmm. the ultimate freedom build your own levels build your own you know what i'm saying your matches creative be creative do mm-hmm. all that shit like, and you know i was like, i was going to explain this to you because overwatch tr- uh, tried and i think it's still in the game where um they were allowing people to um you know make their own game modes what is it i think the overwatch workshop or something the like workshop, that workshop the workshop is but like, that's limiting it's it's bare bones just yeah. like just like the game at launch mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> god damn I'm, I'm, people gonna be like oh he hates Overwatch. i love overwatch you know, like listen all of this comes from a place of passion you know overwatch what I mean? is like a, it's like a flower that's been left out too long mm-hmm. you know what I'm that saying? is desperately trying to um flourish again no it's like you know when you ever like you ever like you ever give somebody a rose like you ever seen how a rose you put the rose on the water mm-hmm. and like it's still in the water but that shit's still dying <laughs> like still <laughs> like, that's like, overwatch yeah, like it's slowly wilting and you can tell that it's wilting but it's still it's still alive yeah but ho- hopefully the uh Hopefully the new roses that are be going to be coming soon in the, mm-hmm. in the form of Overwatch Two are better. It smell better than these. Yeah, and keep in mind this is not the smells only, like shit. <laughs> this is not the only thing that's going to be happening in the next season, which is going to be season twenty one of, Over, uh, of competitive. Yeah, of a competitive that's Overwatch. Great. Hey, hey! Shouts out to the five people still watching Overwatch now. League. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 oh god I, I just thought of something that i will tell you later okay that will, that will, uh, make you i'm not watching overwatch like league i know um i like the game i was i was watching it at one point, i used to not. watch it actually but i just stopped because i just grew out of overwatch you know and but anyway the we'll, other we'll change all right the other change that's going to be happening that um i'm actually this is not a bad change at all uh-huh so they're adding an experimental card um to the overwatch menu now, from what I'm understanding, I don't know if it's like a um, like its own game mode kind of thing where this will happen. But um, you know about the P? What is it called? The the PTR? Yes. Uh, it's the beta test for when uh, they have new changes that will go into the game eventually. But it's only available on PC. What this is is essentially it's going to be available for both console and PC, which is already a plus. And what will happen is that. They will test certain changes to heroes and players will be able to play it and give feedback based off those changes. If those changes are well received and are accepted by the community, then they will actually implement that into the live game. Like say for example, um, uh, let's say that uh, this Overwatch experimental card gives Soldier one extra point of damage in his rifle, right? We test it out. Um, we get to determine whether or not it's broken, uh, it's perfectly fine, he needs it, or um, he needs more of a change. There, they can get the feedback from that and either implement it or just take it out and put another change in. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, that sounds interesting. Uh, that's 
step in the right direction. It, it is a step in the right direction. Hopefully, but, uh, uh, is that about it for the uh, the Overwatch news? Anything that's else? That's pretty much it from this developer update that um, uh, I saw. Okay, Blizzard, keep trying. Keep you'll you'll hopefully you'll get it right. Yeah, but yeah, anyways, just, just get a fucking hero band system already. Every game. That has a competitive thing. Has anyway. Something like that. <laughs> ah, you're... Ah, yeah. Anyways, uh, moving on, uh, moving off of gaming for a little mm-hmm. bit. Something we, that we haven't been talking about for a while. We always world... come back to this every few episodes. Just yes. Anime. Uh, what anime have you been watching? So uh, besides been... the one that we have on our notes list, because uh, other than that, that, I have been watching a shit ton of Gintama. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those of you who do not know, it is a very funny shonen anime. That uh, I did not watch until now, and it's existed for many years. I think since two thousand and four or six, one of those years. Nice, nice. So it's been incredibly funny. Uh, I already binge watched fifty episodes of the show, and there's like four hundred of them. So I'll probably be finished with it by the end of spring. Mm. Anyway, uh, besides that, that's really all I've been watching. Oh, what okay. about you, my guy? I haven't really been too caught up on my my spring anime. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, but besides that, I've been, I've just been watching. You know what I'm saying? The regular. Um, my hero, of course, that we're gonna have to talk about a little in the second just now. Yes. Um, what episode? Fifteen? That they just put out? Fourteen? Fourteen. Fourteen. Fifteen comes out tomorrow or today if you're listening to this right now. Yep, yep. So, anyways, we waited a few weeks to talk about this, and I think this is now a good time because the dust has settled. Yeah, we we talked about the the beginning before, but I felt like we given enough time for like the a build up to happen and mm-hmm. a cool down to happen, so now we can give us. Now we can give y'all think, our true thoughts on it. Think of it as like a mid-season review. Pretty much, yeah. Mid-season yeah. Season review. So, um, I'll start off with you. Um, what did you th- What did you think of season four so far, my hero? Halfway into season four. Yes. I. Okay. See, at episode seven, I was kind of more so half and half on the show. Mm-hmm. Because I, I saw where the narrative was going in terms of him getting with Night Eye and, and you know I'm saying, start the former relationship and stuff. But, like, I, I felt like I, I, I kind of liked where it was going, but it, there wasn't much to grab me in terms of action. It was more of a, a build up yeah. to this, uh, a, a pretty big build up, actually, mm-hmm. that happened between Overhaul and, and um, you know what I'm saying, Night mm-hmm. Eye, Deku, and Lamillion. And, by the way, spoilers, by the way. Yeah, uh, I was literally thinking the same thing. But yes, uh, for if you haven't guessed already, we will be spoiling a big portion of My Hero. If you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch it already. I like the arc as a whole. Mm-hmm. It was just a lot of dead spots in between is what mm-hmm. I'm trying to say. But but once it picked up, it, it really picked up. Yeah, it definitely picked up. Um, I was going to say, the first half... I don't, you can tell me if I'm wrong or right. It felt like they were trying to do like some sort of mystery... Um, type of uh, ordeal where it's yeah. like you have this girl right that um, overhaul treasures as like this thing that he can use to take over the criminal world and also change heroes forever right so you're wondering like what is it that this girl has and then slowly as the episode up, up until the raid um, you're wondering like what is it about this girl that's so special like why are they trying to save her why does this guy want to um, keep her to himself you know what I mean Mm-hmm. Um, after all that said and done, it, it definitely picked up, like you said. Um, the raid on um, the entire uh, Yakuza place was pretty good. It was pretty good. Uh, Kirishima had his moment. That 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 those uh, that episode with Kirishima and Fat Gum versus that fucking guy that just liked to fight. That was a really good episode for me. Um, Lamillion, um, Night Eye, when they finally reach uh, Overhaul. Uh, do, you, do you want me to spoil what happens? Bruh, or? I, I'm actually kind of upset. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I'm assuming Lamillion's going to have some type of future in, in the show. But not I won't, obviously, because he's <laughs> fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But I was just kind of upset because they, they, they could have really developed that character a lot more uh, before anything really happened. I mean, I don't know what happened to the manga. Mm-hmm. There could have been more development. Mm-hmm. But uh, overall, overall, I would say Night Eye was like he was cut too short. Like there wasn't enough development. There had to be something left mm-hmm. in there for me to attach to him, other than being a sidekick. 
Yeah. See, all we that all that we got from the thirteen episodes that we got to see him in is that you know he's a big All Might fan. He was once a sidekick to him. Uh, he predicted that All Might was going to die in the future based off of his quirk. And aside from that, that's really all that we really knew from him. He wanted Lemillion to be a uh, one for all successor, but he uh, All Might chose Deku instead. So he was like, "Why the fuck you chose him instead of Lemillion? He's perfect for the role." And I don't know. I felt like there could have been more to explore with him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There really could have been a little bit more to explain. I know it's 13 episodes, and what we got is, I guess, enough. Or just at the cusp of, at least you know his motivations and his reasoning behind his actions. But I still felt like we could have had some more. Like, especially to Night Eye. And especially how Lemillion um is with night eye yeah ag- agreed i'm um, once again lamillions isn't dead i have a feeling he's gonna get his powers back yeah some some way you know what i mean i feel like we're gonna get a lot of good development out of him mm-hmm. that's not my 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 main problem my main problem is just that uh just i like but I, it was just uh, night eye but i also like how the uh antagonist overhaul was developed and mm-hmm. within those few episodes, the build up was the build up was slow, but I will say it did lead to a, a, a good payoff. I would say from from overhaul and just building that character up, mm-hmm. and then just that crack in the episode after that. Mm-hmm. I actually where... liked his uh, character story. In yeah, this. yeah, it was did. actually really well done. I liked it. Mm-hmm. And then I like seeing the aftermath too, when uh, the, the dude from the League of Villains came over and yeah. he basically took his uh, arms or whatever, mm-hmm. he took his hands so he couldn't use his quirk anymore. And he was already captured, so he basically was dead. <laughs> Pretty much. So, and then hearing that scream too, that was oh funny. I'm God. not gonna hold you. I <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie. You know, I I did laugh, but then um after that, I kind of thought about it for a little bit, and I almost felt bad. Keep in mind, this is the person that was willing to abuse and torture a young girl to get his motives. When you make me feel bad for that person in that split moment, you know something fucked up happened. Um, yeah, it, it's crazy. Uh, I liked Overhaul. His story was really good. Um, Airy, or I'm, I'm just gonna say Eddie. Uh, I don't care how you pronounce it. Uh, her story was cool, but I know there's more to explore with that. I have a question though. Yeah, what's up? You think Overhaul is gonna come back? I'm not sure actually, because his hands are cut off. What else can he do at this point? Because here's the thing though. Mm hmm. I've counted a lot of people out in my hair academia at certain points in the show. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, this person is down for the count. And just when you think it's over, they always just find a way to come back. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So like what if like what if what if he's when he's in jail or something, he finds someone with a with a quirk that can re- also re- do like something similar to what Eddie does. Mm-hmm. Or say like he gets like a fucking the robotic arms, like he comes back like full metal alchemist and shit. <laughs> like Eldr- uh, uh Edward. I was about to mix his two names together. Yeah. Cause just because his arms are gone doesn't mean he can't use his quirk. Like, what if he learns how to use his quirk with his feet? Yeah, you yeah. you can improve you can improve shit over time. Or maybe oh, he's just course. fucking. Uh, maybe he's just in jail. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he's just gonna stay in jail but, forever. But if he comes back, I wouldn't be. I, I would be actually uh, interested in seeing that because mm-hmm. there was another a villain that came back. I don't remember what his name was. Which one? Do it was know? basically it was a big fight between him and All Might in that little stadium. It was like a. It looked, it looked oh, like a fucking penguin. No moon. No moon. No moon. No That's moon. what it was. Yeah. And Nomo came back mm-hmm. uh, twice, actually. Yeah, twice. That motherfucker came back. <laughs> remember, there was one on the train with uh, Deku and Gran Torino, and yes, then he I came remember. back to fight All Might after that. And then he, I think he came back after that. I think uh, one more time. One more time. I don't, I don't necessarily really remember. That might have been a season ago or mm-hmm. season or two ago. I'm, I don't remember everything like that. But mm-hmm. hey, all right. Then let me ask you this question: What did you think overall of uh, Deku's narrative in this half of the season so far? Because if you're gonna, if I'm gonna be honest, I feel Deku has been the same as he was prior to this. The only difference being is that this is the first time he truly like um, saves someone with his power. Uh, I feel like he's the same at his at the core. I just feel like he's been uh, getting more used to his power and basically having the ability to to use what was it twenty percent without. Hurting himself. 20, yeah, yeah, twenty percent, twenty percent. I think. You know what I mean? I think he's just he he is he his he now is the hero that he has wanted to be. Mm-hmm. He just basically has to learn certain things about it. Yeah, 
or I think personally, it's um he's starting to learn um how to um it's learning how not to manage the power, but rather how to be a hero in general. Knowing how and when to be a hero. Yes, yes, that's exactly it. All right. Although I will say, um, seeing uh, well, spoil spoilers. Yes, um, seeing Deku at a hundred percent fighting overhaul was uh, that that felt good. It was animated well. I just that felt good. I don't know about you. That could, was awesome. It, it did feel good, but if I could just give one critique to that fight, it was uh-huh. a great fight. But if I have to critique it. I will say there there could have been times where the animation was used a little better uh-huh. because I I my brain I I see I see how like they try to like cut corners and animation sometimes like when Deku did the whole the whole punt the whole fist through the sky type shit I was just like I could just tell like they're kind of cutting corners mm-hmm. but at the same time as to what the actual final product came out to be and how well it was animated as a whole, yeah, it was worth it. But I shit like that just kind of irks me when I see things like mm-hmm. a million fists in the sky. Like, come on, like One Punch Man did that first. First, no, I know, I know. Um, but I will say, well, for me, I enjoyed Great it. Great fight, though. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, but that's just my little critique. Mm, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Um, I just enjoyed it solely for the fact that this was literally like a glimpse. Of the true power this motherfucker has. Mm-hmm. Like, he went all out for this man. <laughs> I'm talking about this man kicked himself so high up, he began flying. <laughs> like, the fuck? And I like the reasoning. Uh, I like the justification that they did it. That, you know, Eri can essentially re rewind the human body. So she can heal all of his injuries before they take an effect on him. Yeah, that was dope. But yeah. overall, thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs, thumbs up. up so far. Thumbs up. We're not going to give it a rating until the season's officially yeah. over, but thumbs up. Yeah. So but anyways, far, pretty good. Pretty good. I think this is a good place to wrap it up, honestly. Yes. We're approaching the 47-minute mark. Yeah, Jeez. Jesus. But yeah, uh, anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please feel free to give us a five-star rating on uh, iTunes because it helps us grow, gets out to more people, all that. Uh, make sure if you are listening to the audio, you also get a chance to check out the video version that's on my YouTube, Aaron Ryder, A R A N R Y D E R. Yep. Every other, every other of my socials is Aaron Ryder. That is again, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. <laughs> it's A R A N R Y D E R as well. The video version comes out every Monday morning at around uh, 9 a.m. and the audio comes out Saturday. Same time, 9, 9 a.m. And you can find my guy's socials here at... You can find me at Arthur underscore ASP on pretty much anything that is not YouTube or Twitch. On those platforms, you can find me at Flying Rye. And All right. pretty much it, yeah. Yeah, pretty much it, guys. Well, once again, if you enjoyed this... Uh, podcast episode make sure you give it a five star rating and a like and a comment do all that stuff anyways mm-hmm. guys my name is aj and my name is arthur and this has been the loading podcast episode 24 we'll see you guys next time mm-hmm. have a good one